Welcome to the Separate oh. Podcast. Oh, yeah. Hi. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Today, we have a special guest. We got Ian McCall. Yes. Formerly me. known as yeah, <laughs> Mr. Uncle, Creepy. Uncle Creepy. Uncle Creepy. I like saying Mr. Creepy because it's more fun. But Uncle now Creepy. I'm, now I'm Mr. because I'm, I'm, I'm regal. Because you separated from that. I did. Now, I now, finally got rid of that fucking name. The UFC posted it because I don't know. I thought they thought it was great. I thought it was stupid. Uncle Creepy. You thought, like, what the fuck? It was a bad joke that I wrote down. And people loved it, so I kept going on the joke, and like, oh, we're going to make that your handle on Instagram. And I was like, but no. And then I, I couldn't change it, so the last five years I've been trying to change it. They've been trying to charge me like 15 grand. I'm like, fuck you. That's insane. Yeah, and it's like, I, I was broke not that long ago. You know, like, I, I shouldn't say broke. I mean, I owned my house, and I, mean, I just wasn't making any money, so I guess I was broke, but uh, I owned my house outright. You know, so it was like I made some good moves, made some investments in business, um, but I just wasn't making any money. And on the verge of losing everything, um, and you know, just to climb back, like now, I'm like, no, no, I'm not, I'm not spending that sort of money on just something that just didn't make sense. So finally, my new agent, uh, Lance, um, over at LMG, he he got a change. Like one day, he's like, hey, I was in the office writing, and he's like, you mean you change your name, right? I was like, yeah, please. And he goes, okay. I was like, why? He goes, I'm just talking to Facebook. I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> oh, that's works out. that's rad. Um, yeah, Lance in in my comedy career has been huge. He's like my Yoda. He's like, he's he's your old. He's yeah. He's wrinkly. you know he's you know wrinkly Japanese dude. No, he's yeah. he's not that old. He's like five, ten years older than me, uh, mid forties. But knows everyone. Does Russell bunch of stuff for Russell Peters and Fluffy, Jim Gaffigan, um, uh, Taylor Tomlinson now, mm. like a bunch of people. Alfred Robles, like there's the list goes on. Like his company rebranded Gal Gadot when they turned her from the girl that got naked on the, in, Fast in, and in the movie. No, no, no. The, uh, Wonder Wonder Woman, when she went from being the girl that got naked on camera yeah. to being Wonder Woman to turn her into this woman's empowerment whole thing, they they did the rebranding. Like these, the, Lance is an OG. Like his brother built the Nike uh, sneaker program. Like he he that's he's that's his brain, you know. So like he's he's crazy connected. Like I, I, people think I'm connected, and I'm like, no, no, no. He's 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 like business wise is so good at this, yeah. and he's created an, an environment uh, within my, you know, for comedy for me, especially during COVID and stuff with all the thing on right now. There's nothing. There's comedy's kind of fucked up. Um, <clears throat> I get to go in once a week into the studio and record on camera in front of people like Vanessa Johnson, Willie Mack, Alfred Robles, uh, you know, and a bunch of people that no one knows. Um, Small Kiki Anderson, you know, and 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 I and I I get to also bring my friends in, which is cool. Like AJ's been in there, um, and we just it's all creative, you know. Everyone's giving each other positive compliments and saying, "Hey, do this, change that, do this, change that." And it's, I know I'm getting advice that people are saying they've got five years into comedy, and I'm a performer. I can get on stage and, and fight people for blood money in my underwear. I can I can do comedy, <laughs> you know. I can, yeah. like no problem. I, I, no one's trying to kill me up there. We're good. I don't like. Yeah, you've 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 been hit enough. You're like, you know what? What is this heckler gonna do? Yeah, what? Uh, like, you gonna get mad? No, or get mad all you want. You're they're like, there's nothing you can do to me. I'm on stage, not you. You know, and and um and realistically, I I'm I'm trying. I'm not trying to be that funny yet. I'm trying to just tell my crazy stories from my life because it was really wild. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, I'm a different person now. Obviously, I've changed. Uh, but I was psycho for a long time. Like my pursuit of greatness and fighting to become number one in the world, um, I had to be a psycho. I had to have a chip on my shoulder and be an asshole and like just be crazy. And I was always on drugs too, so that was bad. What what was that chip on the shoulder? What was the thing that would keep you going every day? Because I I knew I was the best, mm. and I had to prove it, and I did for a short, very short amount of time. But um, I had a fall from greatness. I did, and it was pretty gnarly. You know, dying of a drug overdose, and um, you died. Yeah, twice I think. Yeah, <laughs> twice. Died twi- and then you, oh, you, we, we, you died resuscitating me, and you know, twice. Oh, that's literally we were just talking about that on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. In a DM, you're like, yeah, I, I oh, I died. I, I died there. I could have died hitting my head snowboarding. I was very good at snowboarding too. Mm-hmm. And when I started wrestling and fighting, I was like, I, you know, I re- well, I started wrestling, and then. Um, I, this, that's the winter, like I started wrestling the summer before and that winter I broke my collarbone, um, snowboarding Mm -hmm. and, or no, sorry, broke my collarbone in, in the winter. So I missed the season, 
you know, because I was going to go ride with sponsors the, the, the weekend after. Um, and then that summer I started wrestling. So then I just took off with wrestling. Like I just forgot about 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 uh, snowboarding because then plus I didn't live in the mountains. You know, like it was just it was a trek. So uh, I got obsessed with that and, um, you know, never look back. Like uh, this this sports have been my whole life. You know, it also sheltered me in certain ways. Like I'd be crazy partying and going out. But every time I went out, you get treated like a king. Mm. Everyone wants to have fun with you. Girls want to sleep with you. Like famous chicks, you know, like pick you out. I'm like, oh, I'll take that one. You're like, it was a weird existence. It was really weird. And I was such a playboy. It was gross. You know, it was like, it was me just acting out my traumas and being crazy and just, just being a psycho. Like, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't proud of myself. <laughs> Did you feel like you were playing a character oh, yeah. in a way? Yeah, totally. That was totally it. I had to project. That's why I have, that's why I wear this armor, you know, this like everything I have. That's why I'm built this way. That's why I'm mm. tattooed and, uh, I don't know, I have scars all over my face. You know, I've had like almost 90 stitches in my face. It's just this look that people, especially in psychedelics, are intimidated by. You know, in the, in the healers in the yoga space, because I, I study kundalini yoga. I've been doing yoga for a long time, very spiritual person. Um, and I know I don't look that way. <laughs> I, got, I, just, I don't carry myself that way, but I have a vast understanding of, of spirituality and religions and how they all tie back to psychedelics. Um, I think you carry yourself that way. I, I think you do. You have like this calmness about you. Well, yeah, but I, I think if you, my outward appearance. Oh, no, I mean, when you first meet you, they're going to be like, oh shit, like, yeah. like I'm a healer, but he's a wounder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I used to be a predator. Now, now I'm a, a, a protector. Oh, you are a protector. Yeah. And yes. I, used, I used to hunt other men in the cage. It was just, you know, I wasn't like abusing anyone outside of it. Well, emotionally, I, I abused a lot of people. Uh, but, you know, I just, that was where I got my kicks was my job. It was so much fun. I, I used to love hurting people. Um, and it was, I look at it humorously now, but I mean, you know, you go into a cage and you give and receive PTSD. Not only did you do like what happened in your life to make you be a fighter in the first place, pretty fucked up shit. And then your job is to climb into that cage in your underwear and you're on video in front of the whole world on replay just bludgeoning each other and just the raw emotion. That's why people appreciate it so much. But but we don't have enough safeguards um, in place. Well, we're getting there. We are. Like the UFC specifically, I set up a study with Johns Hopkins University and the UFC for using magic mushrooms or psilocybin for a brain study for CTE. So that's like the, what was the biggest feather in my cap. I started as a scientific researcher in psychedelics. I'm... I'm Obviously smart, um, smarter than I look, but wait, did the science research, do you got into the after? Uh, I've, uh, I, the stuff, I wanted or? to be three things as a kid. I wanted to be a comedian. I wanted to be a scientist. Well, scientist first and then a comedian. I'm trying to think which one was first. I don't know. Kind of around the same time. And then I found fighting and I was like over everything. I'm like, Oh, I want to do this. Yeah. Um, I had a traumatic brain injury when I was 15. That kind of set me off into being a complete psycho, um, as well. That was the, the, the snowboarding uh, incident where I was in the hospital for a couple of days sleeping. Um, it was really bad. Uh, but where was I going? Shit. Um, so what was I saying? <laughs> well, um, well, well uh, actually, I, I do want to talk a little bit on. more about that. Because you keep saying psycho, psycho trigger. Like I'm hearing psycho trigger. Yeah. So you hit your head really hard in a snowboarding accident. Yes. And then you turned, that like was your first flip to psych psychoness well i was always crazy mm -hmm. and i've smacked my head a lot growing up <laughs> you know not gonna lie i smacked my head a lot okay. but that seemed to it was the right time i started taking pills when i was like 14 and you know i was always a high level athlete i was always good at everything um horrible at school barely got through high school um i shouldn't have got through high school i was just a star you know, and I come from a wealthy family, so I get to do whatever I want, especially back then. One percent, right? Yeah, the one percent, man. Yes, yes. Um, got to abuse that power. Um, see, my, my family is tied back to the president of the United States, and not Trump, but the 14th president. The guy that started the Civil War for slavery. Um, yeah, Franklin Pierce. Okay, thank you for answering that, because I don't know shit about history. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but 
So why do I keep spacing out? Jesus Christ! I, mean, I think I haven't smoked weed, and I keep spacing out on, on, on where we're going with the conversation. Yeah, like how did how did that trigger okay, a, a okay, psychoness okay. so, that I'm curious about? So when you have a traumatic brain injury, mm-hmm. um, it it creates amyloid plaque over your over your brain, and that's that's CTE, that's brain damage. Plaque. Yeah. Kind of like like uh, on on teeth in a way. Scar tissue. Similar, scar tissue. Yeah, scar okay. tissue over the brain. Mm-hmm. And that blocks the neural pathways. It blocks the signals from side to side from every part of the brain. So your brain is not firing off properly. You're confused. You're depressed. Your hormones, usually when you hit your head, your hormones get fucked up as well. Um, Testosterone and things like that. And, um, you know, it inevitably drives you crazy. kills you, you know, because it just gets worse and worse and worse. And... Uh, that's what psychedelic fixes. That's what psychedelics fix. I said that wrong. Um, you know, there. So this, here's a crazy thing. You take two pictures of brains. This one's mine over here. It's all fucked up. But I'm an adult. Made my own choices. I'm you know live my life. Um, this one over here looks exactly like mine, but this one's a child, and that child has been repeatedly raped, and those images forever changed my life and my view of everything because why are we judging people as they grow up to be slutty and stupid and addicted and all this bad stuff when um it's all traceable to trauma not just blunt force trauma to the head but actual emotional trauma or you know sexual trauma and all that sort of stuff because it's uh that that's you see that's that's i just want to save the kids like adults are adults. Like we made our choices. But if I can go back and fix the kids because we're all biologically the same, we can kids can take psychedelics all day. They're fine. Uh, they have less they carry less trauma, so they're actually honestly have a better time. They'll see a bunch of pretty lights and stuff. Um so if I can help fix that stuff, you know, I, I can help fix society as a whole realistically cuz there's a, a, a book called The Body Keeps a Score. I have that book. Okay, so you, you get it. <clears throat> and uh, Dr. Gabarmonte is is incredible. These guys in that space that are teaching about um, exactly that. You know, your hungry ghosts that are trapped inside you. And so the trauma sticks in your tissue. It festers, turns into inflammation. Then it will inevitably kill you. It'll create depression, IBS, cancer, Alzheimer's, whatever it is. Everything in the body bad is tied back to inflammation. So, um, you know, and, and, and psychedelics are a huge catalyst because as they, like psilocybin specifically, um, I guess they all, they all work, but a psilocybin has a better, seems to have more power to it. Um, it, when so you go psilocybin to psilocin as it converts in your body and psilocin is a serotonin analog. So here's the receptor and your serotonin spinning around it, turning it on. Well, it looks like a large flood of serotonin. It mimics it as it goes down around the receptor and turns it on. And as the receptor turns on, there's a very big anti-inflammatory effect in the pathways of your brain as it's breaking up and creating an epigenetic neurogenesis in your brain. It's healing the gray matter of your brain. And uh, both hemispheres are now speaking better and you're, you're learning at a faster rate. You're picking up on people's energies. You're able to do all these things. It, it drops the default mode network in your, in your body. So you're not in a fight or flight stance or space. You know, you're just like, oh, cool. Like, okay, oh, wow, trauma. Like, I just dealt with some really heavy shit today. While I'm, it ended my workout, you know, which is fucked up. But um, It ended your workout? Oh, because I got a phone call about someone that I'm very close with. Yeah. Um, they're back and they need to go to rehab. They're using using fentanyl again. Oh, okay. um, and you know, it's. I was talking to this person's parents, and I was like, "Hey, you know, this is what has to happen. Rehab has not worked. You know, sending them. You know, like give them to me. Like I said, very close to these people. Give them to me. Number one, get them through detox." And, and then give them to me and I'll take them to Peru or Mexico, wherever my friends are, wherever my shamans are that I work with. Uh, I'll set them up with my, my integration coach because it's been someone who's specific to me. I know how good they are. Um, and detox, then you go ayahuasca for a week and I'm going to ring you, I'm gonna just ring out all that shit. And then we're going to go home and, uh, and you're going to go to rehab for six months. I was like, either that or you get everything taken away. 
house, cars, money, whatever it is that you're, you're not in control of, you know, like you've, you're fucked up. So I'm trying to just tell them, and I don't have to take them, but again, this is someone I love. So I'm like, yeah, I'll, I would, I would love, I'll, t- I'll take a week off at work, you know, to save this person's life because I, that's again, money. Like I'm trying to raise a lot of money for some projects right now, millions of pounds or euros and millions of dollars. Um, and I'll make an absurd amount of money, but like, I don't, I don't, I can't lose more friends. My best friend died in my arms. Wow. Yeah. From partying himself to death after his career went to shit. Um, body went to shit from a you know, car accident and hit by a drunk driver and a fighting career. Mm-hmm. Mm, fighting yeah. career. And I've lost a lot of friends. Um, one of my other best friends killed his wife and himself. Um, my coach killed himself. My, one of my first coaches, it was the, the first coach was his assistant, basically. Um, I just, there's been so much death in my life and I can't have more people die. Especially when I know I have a cure. Mm. So I just, I said, listen, either you guys need to cut this person off because I've been telling you this for a while. Like, I, I, I know this person doesn't want to go to Ibogaine, which is, would be better. So maybe it's Ibogaine. Maybe I go to Ibogaine with them. I don't care. I, I'd rather go to Ayahuasca. Um, but because this, this person, it, I, Ibogaine didn't work before. What is that? Uh, it's a, a root from Africa. Oh, so it's kind of similar to like a ayahuasca type yes. thing? Yes. Uh, it's harsh, apparently. It's fucking really hard. It's supposed to be harder than yeah, ayahuasca? I, yeah, yeah. And sure. I've never done it, so actually, maybe I'll go do that. I just, I have more connections in ayahuasca and mushrooms. Um, but, you know, the specifically the place I would go for, for uh, it's called Arcana. I think they're in Peru right now, in the Sacred Valley. Um you know, we did, when I went to Mexico with this team, I did the most medicine I've ever done. 20 grams of mushrooms on a Monday, which is, you know, a big dose of mushrooms is three and a half. So I did what is called the God dose. And I'm a researcher. It's what I do. I, I educate about it. People are always like, why? What are you doing? What's, you're an addict. Like, whatever. I'm like, mm, not anymore. Mm. I do it because I like exploring the, the inner, inner workings of my brain and psyche. And, I, and I've been through a lot of trauma. So you, how do you, how are you going to judge me about the amount of medicine I take? Um, but then it, so mushrooms, ayahuasca took Wednesday off. Uh, I couldn't open up in the heart space that for the first night. Um, she was jealous with me. I was smoking too much weed going into it. I just had some gnarly trauma of a, you know, I, don't, I shouldn't talk about it on air. Um, really gnarly trauma in my own life. It just, it just happens, you know, and I had to go to the jungle and I went down there and, and I was, uh, she's, ayahuasca doesn't like you using other plants. You're supposed to be on the dieta. And sure, my diet was good and I wasn't doing other drugs, but um, didn't, didn't connect with her very well. So when I woke up in the morning on Wednesday, I did 5 uh, meo DMT, which is like the strongest hallucinogen you can do. That opened me up in the heart space to love myself again. Hmm. Like it was this crazy lesson of self love, which I never did before. Um, then I had ayahuasca that night. I drank big boy cups, so I think it equal to like four cups total, which is a lot. Um, and then did the same thing on Friday night. So on Friday night, I, I finally quit. I quit after the first first double cup, and I said no mas. Like you know, Roberto Duran, the boxer, the famous boxer back in the day, Sugar Ray Leonard beat him, and he said no mas. No mas. Finally said no more. And like as a fighter, I'm fucking. I'm the strongest person in the world. You know what I mean? Like I care, still carried myself that way, even though I've been retired for a while. And I, I don't, I don't fight anymore. I don't, I don't hit anything because my hands are fucked up. I just, I do jujitsu. I teach my daughter's jujitsu class and do my own jujitsu a little bit. <laughs> I lift weights and try and look cool. Um, <laughs> like it just, I'm vain and it just is. You know, I like looking nice. It's part of my job. Um, but you know, the I finally quit. And I remember just finally, you know, Jose, the owner, uh, head facilitator, he goes, all right, you know, turns his light on because the room's dark. You're in the jungle. And then the shamans are singing um, Ikados, which is this high-pitched song. And they just basically sounds like you're there singing in this crazy off-pitched tone that is this words that you don't understand. Never. They're not. They're Shipibo. They're not Spanish, English, Portuguese. They're Shipibo language. And these people are shapeshifters. You know, it's crazy what they can do. It's wild. Um, 
And he goes, all right, second cup, who's up? And I literally, I just got up and left. I'm walking through a dark room where people are gig- maybe like, I don't know who's on the floor. There's p- puke everywhere. <laughs> like in buckets. I just got up and beeline for the door and went and hid in the hacienda. It's this huge uh, uh, 600 year old botanical garden. And it's the oldest hacienda in the Yucatan. It's the most beautiful place I've ever been. It's called Shambalate. I mean, it was, it was fucking incredible. And I just went and sat out and stared in the jungle and the jungle was just calling to me. For the last two nights, the jungle was calling to me. Just like, you know, go for a walk. You're safe. And go, come on, come for a walk. And I was just like... Was like just you like, could hear it? Yeah. Well, you can't, you can't hear anything. It's, it's, it's um, like a, is it like a weird connection or just like... Oh, dude, you're, you're looking at sacred geometry in the moonlight in the jungle where there's no, there's like barely any lights, you know? And you just, it's the, the, the allure of the jungle, of the Mayan Yucatan, all the bugs and just... You know, my, I'm 10% Native American. My Native stuff goes down there. My family went from Spain to Nuevo León, Mexico. And somewhere along the line, someone slept with a Native. And they went from there to Texas. And when we went to Texas, uh, we turned into Mexicans. And, you know, my family went through... You're, 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 it's, 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 Texas is a racist place, still. Especially back in the day, Corpus Christi. My family had to walk in the back doors of places. Um, that's why they left. But... So somewhere down there, when I'm, when I'm in Mexico in general, I just feel this connection with the land. With the amount of medicine I've done, I have this crazy spiritual connection with, with Mother Earth and what I think of as, as you know, um, God or, or Creator is Earth. Creators, or we're all God. God's here. You know, we're all that. There's no man up there making rules and going, oh, if you don't do this, then you're going to go to banish to hell. Hell's not a fucking place, dude. It's, it's if you were a dad... Would you be that sort of father? No. You, you, you love, if, you, if you're this father who is this all-loving, all-knowing person, guy, or whatever they pitch him as, um, are you going to ever hurt your children? No, I'm not going to have kids just to be like, prove your worth to me. Yeah, that's bullshit. Or that's, I'll fuck your life up. That's old. That's old <laughs> for eternity. That, that's old programming bullshit. I mean, we are God, and our, our creator is Mother Earth. That's what happened. That's where we come from. We're going to be recycled one day. You know, and having the connection to mushrooms is what taught not just myself, but taught a lot of people that, you know, that that's that's how it works. You know, and now when we understand kind of how uh, religions are all tied back to psychedelics and uh, one of my mentors wrote the book Road to Eleusis was a book he wrote with Timothy Leary, Gordon Wasson, those sort of guys, um, you know, the OGs of psychedelics. He's like 66, I think. Uh, and. My friend now wrote the new book that expanded on that, where they did testing of little cups and all this stuff called the immortality key. And uh, Brian Mirror, Mirror Rescue, um, you know, so I, I hung out with like religious, not just scientists that like drugs. I hang out with like religious scholars that I get to sit with and, and take psychedelics and hang out with them. Just eat fucking a handful of mushrooms and just sit and talk. And, you know, it's we'll be at some crazy cool party and I'm in the corner like, okay, yeah, so tell me more. <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, everybody's getting fucking yeah, wasted. And yeah. Whatever. Like I just don't drink, you know, I, I'm not an alcoholic, you know, I'm not, an al- I don't like drinking alcohol. And, and my, my mom used to work for Robert, Robert Mondavi wine. So I, and she used to cook for Robert before he passed away. So I love a good wine. Mm-hmm. I love, you know, a good Japanese whiskey, but like a sip, you know, maybe half a glass, a, a third of a glass. Um, but even that, like, it's not, it lowers my vibration. You know, it, it makes, it just, I don't, I'm not into it. You know, I can, I can smoke the best weed in the world here in California. I don't need to drink alcohol or I can eat mushrooms that my friends grow. Sounds but, like you're just trying to just, uh, <clears throat> be as a, in tune to the world like that, that internal antenna, yeah. like you don't want to numb it. Like like that that in antenna because that's how I've been feeling lately where uh, I feel kind of pressured sometimes that to to drink like I've gone a year without drinking you know months without it too but then it's like such a like an a, adult quote unquote socializing thing and then sometimes I feel pressured like I have to and then I just I just I don't like how it makes me feel unaware like less aware I'm not as quick yeah and yeah. I, and, and like. Dude, I'm a stand-up comedian, and I'm already naturally high energy. I, I don't need it to socialize. Yeah. I feel like it just... I'm a social butterfly. But I do like it, though. Like, like I want, 
sometimes I like getting blasted. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's, it's, it's fun in the moment for me, of course, getting drunk is hilarious and fun. I'm like, I'm not an angry drunk. Like I have a lot of fun, you know, but then comes in like the cocaine and this stuff where I'm like, meh. Like, I don't need to be doing that, you know, because every time I go out with my friends who drink, someone's got a bag of blow. And I'm like, hmm, no, I don't need to do that, you know, because it's, I, I, you know, I, I yeah, I'm, <laughs> I, need, I need to stay better than that. Because um, it's, I have to sit in front of billionaires and these people that are like crazy, I mean, like firing off stuff and asking questions and they're all... Um, especially the ones that are getting into psychedelics, which is most billionaires. Most of those people go to Burning Man. There's only like three, less than 3,000 billionaires in the world. And like, I mean, I know a handful of them. Um, but I, I get to sit with these people and these, you know, influential celebrity types and uh, people that are in this space that are just, we're trying, we're all trying to change the world for the better. Mm. You know, I, I, will, I was just at a couple of Burning Man parties and... You know, we get invited. I've never been to Burning Man, but I'm, I'm actually going to buy a camp next year because my company, one of my companies, wants wants us to do it. Um, and we sit at these parties, and it's a mixture of beautiful Burning Man girls. I don't know if you've seen how the, I've seen some photos, and they look like some fucking hot ass Mad Max looking. It's oh my god, dude! And you see like Victoria's Secret models running around in their little like crazy outfits all the and like they all have, you know, they're, they're just a very bunch of cool people, you know, and you see a lot of these women that are just exotic and you're like, where the fuck <laughs> do they make you? Wow. And they all want to talk because we're the dudes. Everyone's like, oh, those guys have all the money and they're cool. And this guy was famous and that guy's kind of famous. My mentor's famous in the space. Mm. Like he's done some crazy stuff. Uh, and you know, we'll, we'll talk to them and then, you know, cycles in a group, of, a group of guys usually, and everyone's pitching us the business ideas. They're all telling us how they went and they took psychedelics and how it has inevitably changed the path that they're on of life. Their energetic output, their vibration, their interactions with life as a whole for the better. So whatever product they're selling, clothes, you know, gypsy clothes or, you know, shaman chic, um, Jedi, you know, Jedi chic clothing oh. that you see them wearing, um, or uh, a cannabis brand or food or whatever they're doing. They're trying to change the world with it. And they all have, you know, because they're business people, they, uh, they, they scale everything beautifully and it's all worded properly because these people talk about every, every conversation is this, oh, I was in Lithuania playing professional basketball and I was sponsored by Nike. And I, I, had, a, <laughs> I had a sty on my ass. And, uh, you know, I got into silks and I like, I like silks the way they're on my body. Then tie my crowbill and, and, and try this, touch me. And you're just like, <laughs> and then it's like, I was, you know, in the Alps hiking. And uh, like, you're just like, what the fucking accent is that even? Like, it's just, and everyone seems pretty fucked up too. It's kind of funny. Like, they're, they're. That's some Madonna shit. Like, all of a sudden she is like adopting a British accent out of nowhere. I have so much money. Oh, and these people from all over the world, you know, and every, everyone's also very pretty, which is cool. Mm-hmm. Everyone's very good looking. And you just sit around and like, oh, wow. Like, fuck. Like, and, you know, being in my position, you know, I've always gotten women. And they, it's just this, they're always like, oh, hey, like, what are you doing after? And I'm like, mm, you want to go come to Columbia with me and let's eat some mushrooms. And I'm like, I, my girlfriend and my, 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 uh, my daughter wouldn't like that. Yeah. You know, I, I don't, I'm like, sure, I'm addicted to sex still. Fine. But, but look at my girlfriend. She's beautiful. You know, like we love, it's just with us now. Like I don't do that anymore. And it's, um, it's hard for her, obviously, because she sees it. We're at parties and the chicks don't care. You know, like there's other chicks that are just as hot as her. They're just like, hey, like, fuck, get away from me. You know, it's a mixture of money and fame and influence and just the way I've positioned myself in this industry. Hmm. Where now, you know, again, being a protector, like I have to protect everybody. And if I'm around, especially women on drugs, um, no, no, there's no, like, number one, I need to get to know you first. I'm going to pour my life force into you. Like, you know, and you're not gonna just jizz in them. Yeah. That's, that's special like, jizz. That's dude. right. Like, yeah. You have to look at yourself in a better way. Um, and it's, it's just interesting. Cause like, I've got a group of supermodel friends that all had bad trips in Vegas, like five of them. 
and I take him up to my room, up to my suite. I, I walk into my friend's nightclub, and it's his girlfriend or ex girlfriend. And he looks at me, and goes, "What? The, what the fuck, man?" I was like, "What?" He goes, yeah, "Looks at." Me. I look over, and I was like, "Oh no, I just got here." I was like, "What? What, you, what the fuck happened?" He's like, "They're all fucked up. It's my. This is my business." I was like, "I got you." So I walk up to all the girls, and they're they're all six feet with without heels. Some of them are like one of them is like six five. Two oh, of them are like six five. Six five. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're and they're so pretty. They're these. They're all runway models, and they're faded. They're all. It's all. This is churning. You know, the the fears got to them. It's Vegas, and I'm like, okay, what's what's going on? What are we on? What's in there? I'm like, like, oh, we're on. You know, uh, LSD and um, MDMA together. It's called a unicorn pill. And I'm like, all right, well, you know, give me one. I grab one. Give one to myself. And my girlfriend at the time was a, a scientist at UCLA. Um, and we take them and I'm like, all right, we pop them and I right away take the girls upstairs and just see, I'm like sheepdogging all these women. My, even my girlfriend at the time was 5'11". Mm -hmm. So it was like, it's all these, and I'm wearing, I wear sneakers. I don't wear like fancy shoes really. Oh, I'll wear expensive sneakers. True. But like Jordans and all that. Yeah. And just, you know, I've got some paras like that are rad. Um, or just converse, like whatever. I don't really, I'm not, it's not about the money. I just like the way they look. Mm -hmm. Um, but I get them up to the room and they're, you know, taking clothes off and just being crazy in the corner. Ah, you're, you're getting drilled. What the fuck? Who are you? I, I don't know if I can trust you. You're in my brain. And I was just like, okay. And they know that like nothing creepy happened. I just took care of everybody because that's what I do. You know, there's, there's been a lot of interactions. Like I, I, I saved a, gr a woman from a bad mushroom trip in Mexico. I was sober and celibate in Tulum. That was hard. It was, well, I wouldn't say it was hard, but I just got out in the jungle. I, I went to Tulum right after I got out of the jungle. Yeah. And I was there for less than like five hours. And my buddy, who's a DJ down there, he goes, uh, hey, you, you come out tonight, right? And I was like, like, to dinner? He goes, no, like I'm, I have, I'm playing my second to last set at my first residency. And we, uh, you know, you got to come. He's one of my best friends. I'm the one that pushed him on the path to do, to be a DJ down there. And like, he's crushing it. He's a male model, looks perfect. He has the game, you know, like he's really oh, good at what oh, he does. Yeah, yeah. Very, he's the perfect for it. And his music's really good. Uh, and I'm like, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, I'll come and just dance sober all night, like for at least for a few hours. And then I figured I'd leave. Um, he was like, okay, cool. You, do you have a plus one? I was like, no, dude, I just got out of the jungle. All right, well, uh, uh, my girlfriend's friend's coming up to your room she's gonna put her stuff there and she's she's coming out with you tonight and he dates all these very pretty um colombian or you know south american escorts mm. because they let him do it every once <laughs> it's it's really funny and they're all so hot it's fucking crazy and she shows up to my room and i'm like yeah being a gentleman i'm like sure I'll, I'll she can leave her stuff here whatever it's fine um opens the door and i was like oh my god she was just so hot and I was like, oh, plus you know, I, 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 bro broken English, broken Spanish. And I'm like, okay, like, yeah, yeah, plus one. Yeah, plus one. Uh, she was like, okay, I changed and just got naked. And I was like, I'm going to I'm gonna look this way. She's like, no, no, help me tie. And I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> tie. And she goes, oh, pulls out drugs. She's like, want some drugs? Cocaine? And I was like, no, no, I'm good. Like, what, what, you know, no, 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 no. Like, uh, I'm, you know, no, but thank you. You know, it was just like fucking what my life is so, uh, it's so weird. And, you know, went out loud all night and she slept in my bed, but nothing happened. I cuddled a little bit. Um, but like that interaction mm. was like made her fucking love me, you know? Because you didn't do what every other guy would have done. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, she's invited me to Columbia. And I was like, no, I'm sorry. I'm, I love my, you know, thank you. I would love to come see you, but I can't, um, you know, um, and and just that whole week, like I like I saved another a girl from my bad mushroom trip and took her back to the room, made sure she was safe. And because I went to take her out, it was her birthday. We we're just a, a friend, and now she's become a really important person in my life. Like she works for a billionaire, hmm. she's like his right hand, and that's just all. Just I didn't know. I was we were just hanging out, and I'm like, oh, it's your birthday. Like let's go. Let me take you to dinner, and we'll go see black coffee. And she's like, black coffee. I got sold out. And I was like, mm, hold on, text message. I'm like, got us tickets. Let's go. And we go, and she started, the mushrooms turned on her. So I'm like, no, I'll take you home. Took her home. She's like, no, don't do that. Um, no, I don't want to ruin your night. I'm like, I don't give a flying fuck about black coffee. Like, I don't care about, but you're, you took too much mushrooms with me, and now you're having a bad time, and I'm not going to leave you a mile or two from the house in Tulum in the dark at night. Like, that's not cool. Mm -hmm. It's my job to help you and to, to help you. And so I took her back to the room, hung out, made her, made her feel safe, Again, slept in the same bed and nothing happened, just friends, you know. Now she's like my good friend. 
And it's mm-hmm. like those simple interactions, each one just, when I do it, it puts really cool people in my life, you know, because like, I've, again, being the protector guy, you know, it's just like, it's a, it radiates a different sort of energy that people, people really appreciate. Cause like, I just want everyone to be happy. Mm. Cause you know what? I, most, a lot of guys that would be in those two specific positions with a, like, a ridiculously hot woman and all that, whatever, they would feel like they have to hook up or do something. And I feel like it can stem from like an ego, like, oh, I have to feel like a man. Like, I have to yeah. fuck. Because maybe they scarcity mindset, whatever, maybe. Yeah, I, I, I totally get it. And I'm, and I'm not even like. I could have had consensual sex with these people and would nothing be wrong with it. Mm-hmm. Like they wanted to do it, but it's just, um, you know, I just, it's not my thing. Like I'm, I'm I just don't do it anymore. And I just, and I, I was gross for so long. Like it was just, it wasn't healthy and it wasn't cool. You know, I have a daughter like, uh, and I'm, I'm sure she'll run into guys like me when she's grown up. She's very pretty. Mm-hmm. I'm very lucky. She's starting to look like her mom more Thank God. Um, and her mom is so beautiful. And uh, you know, my ex-wife, we have a really good relationship. Um, and it's funny, like her and her new husband are so pretty together. <laughs> Everyone's yeah. always like, dude, they're so pretty. I'm like, I know, right? Uh, but, you know, it's, it, I'm just trying to be this good, responsible person for her because she's all I got. Mm. Like, sure, I have my girlfriend and we're planning on getting married and having kids and stuff. But um, it's been 15 years since we've been playing this game. And I keep, I kept fucking it up until now. Uh, so, you know, I'm just trying to, like be an adult her career is taking off she's had five movies come out since covid started um my daughter and i's relationship is just is better than it's ever been we go out like we you know my family my my relationship with my family's better um everybody everything is just it's like i can't stop now i have to keep getting better and better and better Mm. you know because that's just what i do like I'm i'm obsessive i do get obsessive but if i'm gonna get obsessive i have to get obsessive about something like this not about fighting, not about partying, not about women. Um, you know, like I, I just, I, I work so hard to a detriment where it's gonna, it's, it could, you know, could kill me. Like I, I was so stressed out in the end of my UFC career. I went into the hospital to like 12 times in two years. For? Uh, stomach issues. Oh, because of the high level of stress. Yes. Right? Cause so it always like happens yeah. in the stomach area. Yeah. Huh? And I, mm. I was, so my gut biome was all fucked up. Huh. Um, my stress levels were through the roof. I was taking way too many drugs. My body was just poisonous. Mm. And it was pills, you know. Those are always the worst. Like, you can do... I mean, ketamine is is pretty... It can fuck you up, too. But, like... Or hair, obviously heroin, cocaine. But I'm saying, like, the stuff that are seem a little more... People are... I don't know. Pills are gnarly. It's all the same shit with those, you know. And... Yeah, it, it, the, like the drugs are just, they were so bad in my body. You know, I, I had to just get clean in so many different ways. And with me, it was like my lack of faith in God or what I was raised Catholic and I'm a Catholic church did some really fucked up shit to my family. Um, so, you know, I don't, I don't like those people. Cool. You know, the, 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 just, the, just organized religion. I don't, I don't, I don't like, there's a lot of evil it's man it's that's all it is is man it's the human condition you know it's 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 we and the only reason that it's this shit's fucked up is because of men specifically we're not supposed to be in charge if you look back to like olden days like go back to greece Mm -hmm. all the shamans were women you know women had a much bigger role in society they were much how much they had they were equal with us if not kind of more in charge because look what the fuck we've done just because we can beat them up you know, <laughs> realistically, no, 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 that, that's true. Like physiologically, biologically, like that's what, you know, with the testosterone, we can, it's all, it's testosterone is a motherfucker. And think about it. We can pin these people down and have sex with them at will. Like that's so gnarly to live with. Hmm. So gnarly to live with. Which is why they always have to watch their women have to watch their back and be careful because yeah. they could, they could be compromised in any yeah, time. My, 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 I was talking to my ex-wife about uh, uh, my daughter met a boy. The first, she got her first phone number with my phone. How old is your daughter? Nine. So she got a number at nine years old. Yeah. And this kid is- Spitting game? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And- Amazing. Yeah. 
she's a shit 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 like <laughs> you're like fuck and i thought it was funny you know they're nine years nine and ten years old he's a he's a nice kid he's adorable he's very pretty um a cool little skater boy and i told my ex-wife i'm like yeah they're on facetime and she's like no they're not get them the fuck off facetime and and went on this rant about like it she went from meeting a boy at the trampoline park all the way to uh child trafficking and and like that sort of shit she works with child, like this whole anti-child trafficking thing with Tito Ortiz's girlfriend. Mm. Uh, she's really into it. And went all the way to that. And I was like, yo, you need to slow the fuck down. And she's like, no, 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 you don't get it. You will you will never understand what it is like to be a hot chick. And I was like, oh, okay, wow. And that just like blew my brain up. <laughs> and I went, okay, never mind. And since then I've gone, you are completely in charge. You're in charge of outfits. You're in charge of rules. You're in charge of picking the school out. Uh, because I'm a really good dad, like a really, really, really good dad. But I'm, I just, I'm, I just can't, I'm kind of on the spectrum. Like I, I, it's hard for me to do certain things. I'm really weird and obsessive and, um, I don't know. It's just, I have learning disabilities. Like I couldn't do my daughter's, you know, like homework in like third grade. I couldn't do it. I could, I, I, serious. Wait, are we talking math? Yeah, math. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't do it. And I, I just, I didn't pay attention in school. And I just, I couldn't like pay attention in school. It was fucking so hard. And obviously I have some sort of genius in me to do like what I do or what, you know, what I accomplished. But yeah. like, it just wasn't my thing. And I, you know, she was totally in charge and now it's cool. I can t teach my daughter some philosophy and religious stuff because she just got accepted to some bougie private school. Um, and then we're like, yeah, cool. You know, like I'm back making money and our families are rich anyway, so they'll pay for it. Um, but you know, it's, it's, uh, we, we both come from the same sort of thing. My ex-wife grew up in a famous house in Laguna beach. That's so like, you've seen it. it Oh, okay. with the pool, the pools. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the oceans crash, crash into. That's her house. Yeah, with like music in the background, and everybody's like, <laughs> like yeah. That oh, shit. But I'm saying the house itself. Uh huh. People sneak in and take photo shoots there and shit. It's like, oh, like that. Yeah, it's it's really expensive. Oh. Um, but you know, my daughter got accepted to this school, and you know, she, my ex wife is goes to is a Christian. Uh, my daughter's been baptized. Okay, like and I'm like, cool. I get. I can now teach you the truth about Christianity, the truth about Catholicism and how this is all stems back and all religions go back to psychedelics. You know, Christianity used to be a, a mushroom cult. They worship mushrooms and it got manipulated by men and people in power. And it's turned into this crazy thing where, you know, the, the, the Eucharist used to be psychedelic. It used to be ergot fungus. I think some, some people were mushrooms. Um, you know, maybe, uh, you know, the uh, Amanita muscaria mushroom, the Mario mushroom. The Does it I'm actually look like the Mario mushroom? Is oh, yeah, yeah. It looks oh, just shit. like it. And, really? then, and people, shamans have been using that in um, Siberia, from Siberian shamanism into Europe for a long time, mm. for a very long time. And people sleep on, on Siberian shamanism because it's been stamped out by communism. And uh, everything that's happened in Central Europe to Eastern Europe has been fucking crazy. Um but they, there's, you know, my ex, her grandma was a shaman in Serbia. They had a big farm. The woman never left a 50 mile radius of the farm, but could, could never could read or write. Um, but she could tell you what every plant was and what it did to you. And she could heal people and all this stuff, alcoholism and swollen testicles to whatever the fucking ailment was, birthing babies and animals. Um, you know, these, 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 there's people out there like that. Like I'm a healer. Sure. I just take, I guide the most dangerous individuals from this world to the next to meet a shaman and take psychedelics and die. I get to kill all these people or lead them to their death. They kill themselves. And like I, their former selves. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's ego death. And I get to bring them back safely. Mm -hmm. Whether they're professional athletes, fighters, or I got some friends that are hitmen, um, gangsters I've met throughout my life, you know, fighting. You know, there's a lot of gangsters in fighting. Um, business executives, these people that are powerful, you know, I get to just bring them back, but I'm not a shaman. That's the thing. I was going to do shamanistic training just to learn more of the craft, but I don't have time. Um, but these shaman there, you just see them even interact together. And it's like a, it's, they're just different. You know, these people are, they're bred into it. It's part of their culture. They've been doing it for thousands of years. Like 
we've been lied to about everything in our lives. Science, religion, food, uh, everything. Look at, look, at, look at the world in such disarray because of it. And, you know, getting back to, to the roots of, of these, these people have powers, you know, like I've seen uh, a shaman suck a beetle out of someone's neck. A beetle? Yeah. A beetle, a nail, a fishbone, all these different things. They're called a chonta. It's a bad spirit. They suck out of you. It, it manifests into some bug and they burn it. And it's like, there's things that I, I love it being able to understand and explain everything because that's how my brain works. But uh, there's, I'm really happy there's certain things I can't explain. You know, just the way they, 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 you know, like I said, they shape shift at night in these, like, like during ceremony, you just see them just go from like a little, little kid to a grown up or a jaguar. It's like just so wild. It's really, really crazy. Um, and you know, the way they can just touch you. Like I was, I was going through it when I was on 20 grams of mushrooms. It was really hard. <laughs> And again, I do this stuff not to be, I had an argument with my mom the other day. Why, why do you need to do more? I'm like, because mom, I have to. It's none of your fucking business, lady. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I went deep to heal from the death of my grandmother and some other really, you know, heavy things that have happened in my life. And I was just losing it. And the shaman just came down and touched my hands. It popped up out of nowhere. I'm on my knees, you know, sitting up straight like you're supposed to. You're supposed to sit up straight and carry yourself like that the whole the whole ceremony. And all of a sudden, she just appeared in front of me. Where, like, it's a dark room. There's, like, a, a couple candles in the middle. But she all of a sudden just appeared to me, like, lit up. Like, clearly. Like, Clear, a bright yeah. figure. And just, and just held her hands out. And, but right when I touched her, the trip just changed. Everything just... Boom. And then my... um. My daughter came and visited me on the trip and um, see, I went through the trauma. My daughter pulled me aside and goes, okay, you're breaking up with this woman. Um, she had uh, some mental breakdowns, which were really traumatic um, that I had to be, you know, the brunt of. And my daughter goes, okay, like you're breaking up. You are, um, you know, you, you, I love you, daddy, but like you have a lot of work to do. You need to go to the jungle and take your medicine. And I was like, what? I was like, how do you know? I was just emailing the Heroic Hearts Foundation about this same exact thing. They wanted me to be a coach. Mm -hmm. And I was like, mm, not right now. I'm too fucked up. I need help. And I told Jesse Gold, the, the, the guy that started it. And he's like, okay, well, come down. I got you. Like, you're, you're just, you need to heal, man. And um, when I went through the trip, she, she visited me. And she, she saved me from the trip. Like she, she made everything better. We had this crazy long conversation for I don't know how many hours. Just went over, you know, being a better parent and the promises I've made, the ones I'm going to keep, and being just a better person to my daughter because she's my everything, you know. And I, and I had forgotten her through this, uh, this, this shit that I was going through. Um, so you know, quantum entanglement. She told me to go and knew something that she shouldn't have known, and I went and I, I went through the trip, and she visited me that night, and she had a dream that night that she was with me. Damn. Yeah. And, you know, she told me that my, I'm, I'm having a son. She told me his name, like all this stuff. And every time the medicine says, tells me this stuff, I see a vision of my future and it comes true. So I'm like, wow. Okay. You know, even like with, with my girlfriend, you know, she was gone. I, I cheated on her again and she left last two years and I, heard, I felt this about my son and about everything that was happening and just kind of the path it laid in front of me. And I had just this sense of some sort of love coming, even though I didn't want it. You know, I didn't, I was like, no, I need to be alone. Like I, I, I really need to be alone. Um, but I had done so much healing that I'm like, it was just this open thing. And I was like, hmm, it's a weird, if this, if this is interesting, it's just a weird thing I couldn't explain. Um, and she just popped back up on Signal. And which is like the messaging app. Mm -hmm. And I thought I was blocked. And I was like, uh, uh message like, hi. <laughs> and she's like, Oh, fuck boy. Hi. Like, what's up? And I was just like, you know, giving me shit. Cause all I ever say is hi. I've been, it's been 15 years. And she's like giving me shit. And I was like, it's like, all you're going to say to me. I was like, can I see you? <laughs> <laughs> can I apologize? Um, you know, so I took her to, took her to a 
dinner and then went and saw a comedy, went and saw Greg Wilson, Greg Romero Wilson. Mm -hmm. He killed it. He's so, I didn't know he's that funny. He's my, been my friend for a while now. I had no idea he was that funny. Because you never saw him live? Yeah. I know I'd never, no, I had, I had, I had seen him live. Yeah. I had seen him at the dime a bunch of times, like a handful of times probably. And he was always doing these characters and this shit that I was just like, like, okay, it's funny, but like not, not like the hour I watched him do that night. Oh. It was killer. And, um, you know, we had dinner, we saw that thing and then, you know, we're leaving and she's like, get a hotel room. I was like, okay, well, we want <laughs> to the room and we just spent you know, a couple of days together. That's what we do. We, we go somewhere, Tulum or wherever, Burbank, and we um, meet up, fall in love again and off to the races. So now it's, now it's, you know, we're just in a better place. I'm in a better place, but we both are, you know, we're, it's, we did a lot of growth, you know, during our thing. Like I said, her career's taking off. She's been into plant medicine for a while. Um, and it, it's exciting to just see someone I've loved for so long, like succeed in something that was, that's you know, not easy, you know, especially she's a comedian. She's, she graduated, um, uh, groundlings, not groundlings, she graduated second city. She made it to, she, she passed intermediate groundlings and then COVID happened. Oh damn. And groundlings is tough. Notoriously yeah. tough. She's, tough for she's, passing. she's really good. Like I mm. saw her and I was like, holy shit, baby, you're good. I had no idea how funny she was until like five years ago. <laughs> I had no clue. She's like, will you come to my school? And I watched and I was like, wow. And, and she's not doing that. She's doing serious movies on Lifetime or some racing movie with DMX, you know, like his last movie. Um, but I, I'm excited to see her kind of blow up with, with this because I'm like, you be famous now. You you do the thing and I can just be a stay-at-home dad. I work from home anyway, so why not? So it all kind of works out. So, you know, people say that you have to be at a certain place before you can even begin to date somebody, right? Like they, they say these type of things, but, uh, <clears throat> but sometimes uh, lately I've been thinking, uh, there's been certain women that came into my life where I wasn't really ready to date, but yeah. whatever I went through in those moments where I was with them, it kind of pushed me to go towards where I'm at now. Oh, 100 percent yeah so I, I don't know what you think about all that stuff uh 100 you know. yeah I, I mean i just went to lunch with my one of my ex-girlfriends uh she was a bellator ring girl and a and playboy and stuff now she's got some big podcast called the magic hour mm -hmm. uh, jade bryce and she's a sex and relationship coach and she taught me a lot she left me and when i was at the height of my fame and you know notoriety and fighting she uh she just goes, I, I can't do this. And I was like, well, what's up? We're falling in love. You know, like, you know, let's, let's, uh, let's, you know, let's talk about it. She's like, no, she goes, you have none of the traits I look for in a man outside of the physical. Wow. And I was like, oh, I was like, well, why don't you come over and we'll talk about it? And she's like, no, that's exactly what happened last time. <laughs> and I was like, oh, uh -huh. she's like, yeah, you know what happened? And I was like, mm, you know, it was fun. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I just, uh, and I said, you know, sure, and I, I know what I did wrong. I was just stupid, you know, like, yeah, I was really dumb. I remember TMZ came calling. I guess dating, and I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. They're calling. <laughs> like, this is kind of weird. I'm like, no, I just say we're just friends. Like, no big deal. And that was like seemed to be like a big tipping point of me, like just like, just learning things. I was young and stupid, and and now she's a good friend of mine. She has kids and a man, and we're just you know, but just being able to take like. She's such a good person, such a good person. Like goes to Africa and helps little tribes and kids, and is just like a amazing creature. Um, but you know, being able to call on friends like that during times like this, where I need faces for companies, you know, it's like, I, you know, I can stick her on a wellness brand and be just the face of it, or be an educator for it, and whatever. It makes some sort of relationship and sex coaching. Like who knows? Help invest in these people that I've I've. I found along my path, you know, those, those, the exes can be really beneficial in your life in so many ways. You know, the people you spend that much time with that you love at, you know, even if it's uh, fleeting or it was just lust or whatever, you can go back and appreciate the person, maybe not fall back in love with them, but know you love them because of what they gave you, what they, what you gave each other, that exchange of life and DNA and whatever else, you know, like you can just appreciate people for, you know, 
the things they've that you've you've gone through together. Especially if it's if there's a trauma bond there, that seems to be a really uh, good. I don't say good, but it's uh, if you can work through it in the right way, it can make you bond with someone like really well. Like I see it with my daughter, uh, she met one of my best friend's daughters, their stepdaughter, and they both been through some shit. My, but I stressed my daughter out so much when she was two and a half, she got really sick. You know, like people give her mother shit because she was in jail and rehab, but I got taken away by the DEA. You know, well, I wasn't selling dope anymore, but they thought I was. Um, they raided my house. I was world champion. I'm like, fuck you, I don't have anything. So they, but they took me to jail anyways for a month because I was driving on a suspended license. My PO wasn't happy. Uh, I, I have two, I have two felonies. So yeah, it was bad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it's uh, I, I keep fucking spacing out. Um, it, it, my life, is, as you see, has been so crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, there's been so much craziness in my life with my daughter. She, oh, and also my best friend died in my arms when we were, when we were living in the house together. Like, like he watched the life he, leave us. Yeah, yeah, like he, I breathed some life back into him. I uh, found him dead. Um, and my daughter had to go through all that energy. She wasn't there that day or that night, but her mice was in the morning. Um, but you know, that was the person who was helped while her mom was gone. That was the person that was helping me raise her, my best friend. You know what I mean? So she got sick with juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, which is, you know, an autoimmune disease that she couldn't walk. She couldn't think straight. She was depressed. And, um, that's caused by us stressing her out. The adults, again, the parents. Yeah, again, going back to the trauma. So her and my friend's kid, they, they, who has gone through a bunch of stuff in her life too, um, like hit it off right away. And, and knowing they've both been through so much stuff, they're, they're going to bond over that. And I have to facilitate it, it becoming the healthiest bond possible mm. because they're both beautiful young women who are both nine years old that are going to grow up with, you know, having me in their lives who's going to give them access to all the fun and, you know, like just money, whatever, the, whatever you want. Like let's, let's be responsible though. You know, be good people because if they can have those traits, you know, mom and dad are both addicts mm-hmm. or were at one point, like that's, and you have the trauma, like that could get bad. And imagine both of them getting together and getting all strung out, you know, I'm just acting crazy. And you know, I, I even teach my own daughter. I'm like, drugs are okay. It's not the drug. It's the person. You know, and they even need each other at that point. The drugs need, didn't, the drug addict need each other. They work at that point, but it's, it's about why, what happened, you know? And, and plus telling a kid like, look, you stay away from these certain drugs. Stay away from pills, stay away from Coke, stay away from heroin, meth. Uh, but if psychedelic is done properly, you know, obviously get to know the medicine first in like a, ser- a, ther- a therapeutic session. So you know what goes on there. Get those first traumas out. So then when you go to Coachella, and you eat too much mushrooms, you've already gotten, you're in the space, you've already gotten that stuff out of you, mm-hmm. so it's not gonna come out while you're having fun dancing. You know, it's it's about respecting medicine, not taking too much. You can always take more, but you can't take less. You know, so it's simple adages like that to put in this person's brain, to everyone's brain. But my kid is my kid. And, um, you know, just trying to teach them. It goes, it goes into all life, you know, sex and relationships. And sure, she might be nine, but I don't, I don't pull any punches. That's unfair. Yeah, because you're being honest. And yeah. Because if you, like, uh, so many parents just lie to their kids their whole life. And then all of a sudden the kid is just thrown into reality. And then, and then they, they do crazy shit because they don't know. They weren't prepared. Oh, man. I, I see it all the time. I'm just like, your kid's fucked. Yeah. Like, you, this is your fault. Like, this is 100% your fault. But they love blaming a kid, though. Yeah, because they don't want to take take charge for it. They don't want to take blame for it. They don't want they, accountability. Yeah, they, they don't want to think that they did it. They're a little angel. It's not their fault. They, they gave them everything. Like, no, dude. You were never home. We did, when did you stop giving your kid eye contact? That's a huge one. You know, like... Damn, eye contact. Yeah, how do you talk to oxytocin holding the kid? Like being present for this person, you know, that's a really big deal with kids and people in general, you know, it's that like human interaction of energies and love and just the, the, the positive vibrations, you know, like you wake up in the morning. I remember when I, 
retired, I wanted to kill myself. After retiring from uh, professional fighting? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I started, I got sober. I knew the party was over. Um, I really wanted to kill myself. I wasn't going to, but, you know, thought about it a lot. Um, I have my daughter. I just, I have enough resolve not to do it. But I got sober and I healed myself with with the dosing of, of psilocybin and peptides. I was injecting myself fucking every day with all these peptides to heal myself, <clears throat> to heal and, my addictions. And, and can you explain what peptides is for people? A peptide is a, a naturally occurring amino acid or protein in your body. Think of steroids, but natural. Mm. You, you don't trick your body. You make your body produce these good things. Um, testosterone, um, you know, uh, brain derived neurotrophic factor, which is what you're trying to create with a pep with a uh, with a microdose. Mm. You put that in your body with something called NAD plus, which actually NAD plus will reverse the biological age. It's really cool. Uh, and kind of like, a, like a stem cell type thing. Uh, see, a stem cell has DNA in it. So, if you like an exosome is a better is a is a more of the carrier. But like if you think of it this way, like this is bioscience. Um, I was working with a, bio, a life sciences company about this. So they have a, a stem cell. You take out, enzymatically extract the DNA so it's just a nanoparticle or a vesicle. Mm. And the outside is, say, covered, it's covered in microRNA. You hear about that with all the COVID testing and stuff or the vaccine. MicroRNA is, is uh, basically, think about a bunch of keys. And when it, it's injected into your body, uh, whichever key pops out, that's a brain cell, that's a skin cell, it's where it needs to go to, to, to help. And that thing is full of peptides, growth factors that help you rebuild stuff, help you get healthy. Um, I have a friend that grew back a C6 and C7 vertebra. Vertebrae? Mm -hmm. You can grow back he was Richard Branson's, parts of his spine? He was Richard Branson's uh, kiteboarding coach and mentored by Richard. And what? he, yeah, he was in Panama at Nitro Circus and got fucked up, was paralyzed. This guy, he... Very connected and got me into the space. Like I got brought in as a team with these guys and just started to learn more about it. My, um, my father-in-law, my, my former father-in-law, he is a very powerful doctor. Like he's one of the most powerful doctors in the world. Um, he runs everything in Newport beach medicine. Like he's, yeah, he's a parent. I mean, I've been, I, I just, I know who he is. He's a big deal. Uh, he's reversing the, the, um, like things like ALS, Alzheimer's. Really? Yeah, he's, at, he's at least at least stopping it, if not reversing everything, which is, that's never, oh, that doesn't happen. That when you get Alzheimer's or Huntington's disease or what have you, it has a very straight path and a very, we know which way it goes and that's to death, you know? So uh, just to, to know that that stuff's happening, like, I mean, we can, we're gonna live for a long time. I've got, I've gotten them put in my body mm. And it's incredible. I am, I'm, I really need to get it done again because it's, 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 I don't know if I've ever felt better, to be honest. Like you, do you feel it on a f like every level, like physically, emotionally, mentally, S sex, sleep. Uh, I swear my dick got bigger. Like, they, yeah, yeah they, these guys, they go, I need that. <laughs> the, <laughs> these guys, like the guys that are all in it, they, they're, they're explaining everything for you. Oh, this is what it's going to do and this and this and this. And they go, and it's really good for your dick. And I was like, oh, cool, I'm good. You know, like, but thank you. It sounds great. And I was just like, wow, this is crazy. You know, it's, 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 it's you just feel so incredible because you're putting like 40 billion or 100 billion new, basically, nanoparticles inside you, new cells almost. Hmm. So you're just, you're off to the races. You know, you're firing mentally so well. Because the first things it hits is the, the brain, the heart, and the lungs. They're the first things it goes to. And then after that, it's like the vital organs and joints and what have you, muscles. But you can put it on as a facial cream too, which makes you look way better, way younger. You can put it on a, if you, you know, break your hand like this, you can put it on here and it'll heal, but it'll heal way faster. Um, they put it like a, through a driver cream that penetrates in, I don't know, five layers, layers of skin or seven layers of skin or something. I forgot what it is. It's, it's cool, cool technology. That, that's crazy. Cause the, and when you say L ALS, we're talking the one that slowly takes away your motor function. Mm -hmm. And then to the point where you can only move your eyes and yeah. then eventually die. Cause you yeah. can't even breathe on your own. Yeah. So it can stop that from yes. getting worse from progressing yeah. and potentially reverse it even yeah. a little yeah. bit. Exactly. 
That's fucking crazy. And then a yeah. spine th- vertebrae. I didn't know you could even do that. I didn't either. I had no idea. I mean, I, Jesus Christ. I knew stem cells were, were getting there, you know, but it's just the advancements in, in this medical technology is so cool, dude. It's so cool. I think we're going to live, even if we don't live, we're going to live longer. I think guys, people that are our age are going to live like 150, but it's about, it's about maximizing those years. I was about to say that. Yeah, the what, quality of those years. Yeah, and realistically, what can you afford? Because mm-hmm. this isn't cheap. It's like three or four grand, which is, isn't that much money if you think about how much better it's going to make you feel. But it's about getting the money to do it in the first mm-hmm. place. Yeah, because you'll just you'll work you'll work harder and smarter, more efficiently, and you'll just happy happier. It's just a, it's better quality of life. Yeah, because I just I, I told myself that I'd rather die at fifty and just like with quality than fucking suffer for from like. 50 to 80 yeah. just like a decrepit old man losing yeah. his mind i told my friends please find a way to murder me if i ever get dementia because i'm a i'm a stand-up comic and just even if i'm not a stand-up comic you know not be able to think correctly i've been there with brain damage before i healed myself it's fucked up dude you felt it's, that it's like, not fun oh my god what's that like man scary you're in a constant state of fear hmm. constant state of fear and angry I was just so angry and so pissed off and mean, you know, like just, ugh. it was just not, it was not good. And even, even trying to fix my brain, things got worse, you know, like the UFC tried to help me. They've always been so good to me. And they sent me to transcranial magnetic, magnetic stimulation, TMS. And uh, they go, after two weeks, you, uh, you might have a little, little, little downtick in emotion. I was like, what the fuck does that mean? I'm like, oh, I'll be fine. Like, you'd be good. Yeah, you'd be good. Just contact us if you get a little emotional. I was like, okay. I was on the floor bawling my eyes. And this, this therapy works for people, most people. But, oh, man. And I, I think it was because I was still on Oxycontin at the time. I was still on pills. Yeah. But I lost it, dude. I was in the fetal position on my bathroom for hours just bawling. For no reason? No reason at all. I'd, I'd walk in my, my kitchen and I'd open up every drawer every cabinet and just leave I was just I was really mean to people it was it was it was just terrible you know and 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 that was that was me trying to go through stuff to fix it you know it was like god I didn't know if I was ever gonna get better I mean if I didn't get better I would have I'd be dead by now Mm. I'd be dead from drugs not from killing myself I would have overdosed on fentanyl or something you know it's just you can only gamble so many times with that. And I, I used to make a joke. I can only afford to gamble with my life, but mm. not anymore. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm I don't want to say I'm too important, but the things I'm doing are too important to world, to the world. You know, there's, uh, there's a few, there's f- two projects I wish I could talk about, but I can't, they're really, they're going to be really cool. It's basically dealing with, um, really big name celebrities and oh. really big name athletes much bigger than I, uh, my reach, because they're always trying to, to navigate the space and how we're going to make the biggest impact. It's, it's called the pollination effect. And my measly 80,000 followers or whatever it is now, it's, it's dropped. Um, that's a small reach, very small community. If you have people with tens of millions of followers doing this, mm-hmm. like talking about their experience with, psychedelics I, just in general but but with with the shamanistic thing and the integration all the tools they'll have the breath work the meditation the mindfulness the, all of it well, those 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 simple gifts will be brought to other people and you know also if i can tie in brands with all this stuff if i can tie in you know because i have a lot of these friends i can i can plug them into um you know whatever whatever brand they they want you know, whether, whether it's through investing or whether it's through just being a face. Because I'll educate them on what to do. I will tell them all the keywords and just sit them down and make them talk about it properly. And, and also go through the experience. They'll learn the words. It's, it's not that hard. If I, if I did it, anyone can do it. You know, if, if, if all these different walks of life that I sit with, if they can do it, you can do it. It's not, it's not rocket surgery, you know. It's just like, it's, it's simple and it's fun. I mean, it's, it's fun to be better. The, the psychedelic experience itself is not fun. It's, it's 
the end result. The end result is fun. Yeah. Yeah. Because life, because life's just better. Yeah. Simple. It's always it's always tough doing the the shittiest, most painful part is running towards that shit, yeah. the trauma, whatever we need to do to uh, improve that. By the way, guys, he's not bored. He just had a very long day. Okay, just letting yeah. you know. Yeah, I just yeah. work way too hard. He had a, yeah, he works fucking coffee. hard as shit. Oh, you need coffee? <laughs> yeah, I'll go get some after this. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah. I'm sure there's some coffee on right here, right? They have a coffee uh, place like a minute away. Perfect. Yeah, real, yeah. real close. But um, the thing that stood out right now is you were saying about like how something bigger. And I keep hearing that, at least in the, through the internet, from like really successful people. You yeah. need like Tony Robbins, everybody. You yeah. need to have a, a goal or like do. It has to be for something bigger than you. And that's something that you know I get very selfish at times, yeah. or actually a lot of times, because it's just like, oh, I'm I'm my own brand, whatever. I have to keep putting my own shit out. And then uh, it's easy to get lost in just the response from people or the lack thereof. And then you know either celebrate myself or make myself feel. Like I'm worthless. Yeah. Um, and I think maybe it's most likely because at the beginning it was really about I want to do it because it was like COVID. That's when I started getting following. I was like, I yeah. want to help people. I want to help yeah. people. And then life started opening up again and it's easy to become selfish again because yeah. there's so much distraction and you want to pull in and, yeah. you know, so I don't like that's something I'm, I'm, I'm I think I'm here and there, which I, I think I probably need to think about more. Like what, what am I doing this for mm-hmm. outside of me? Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's uh, the moment I said, I'm not going to touch anything unless it helps other people was the moment I changed my life. Wow. And it might sound a little salesy, but it's true mm-hmm. ever since I started saying that. And my life was a selfish pursuit of the things I wanted. I took whatever I wanted. You know, I did just no one could tell me what to do. And I achieved it. I, I achieved it. I, I was searching out for gold and I got it. And it got me, it got me nothing but a bad attitude, <laughs> some fame, <laughs> sure. But like some money, but whatever, uh, not that much money. Um, <clears throat> and that, that change in my life has just made things so much easier. It's made life. I mean, I don't worry about anything. You know, I'm, I get stressed about work, you know, because I'm on calls from 8 AM to, to now, I have a call after this uh, on the way to a mic. Luckily, I have them tonight, so I can do some mics. Mm-hmm. You know, hopefully, go by Badger and Jam maybe after um, this place. Have you been to Badger and Jam? Nope. With uh, Vanessa Johnson's place? Nope. Oh, dude, it's great. It's good. It's really good. I'm really proud of her. Um, she's become like a good friend of mine. She's cool as fuck. You know, I, I, I people give her a shit because she's you know the hot chicken comedy, and she is. She's hotter than everybody else. <laughs> uh, it's true. She's very, very, very hot. Um, but you know, we're just, we're just, I'm friends with her, with her boyfriend too. We're just sort of to meet him. Um, but like, she's been, she's been a, a, a big person that's taught me a lot. You know, like she's, I remember when she's like, stop lying up there. She's sitting with Willie Mack and she goes, yeah, yeah. Why don't you just stop lying? Hmm. And I was like, what? <laughs> uh, she's like, just tell your stories. Your stories are so out there. Like, they're so out there. People, it's just the shock value alone. And they're all real. You know, and, and she goes, don't punch them up. And I just started to do that and everything changed. Mm. You know, uh, and and there's been a bunch of other stuff that her and, and Willie has dropped some serious knowledge in my brain where I just like, fuck, thank you. You know, because I, I don't, I, I don't like sucking at something. And if I'm not learning at a really big clip, this is not how I work. I have to. And I, I'm, I've gotten obsessed with, with, um, with comedy. So, you know, whatever I can do to get better. And luckily, I'm, you know, I already have a blue check mark. I already, you know, I have a puppet show and sponsors and all this stuff where it, it's, I'm perfect for it. You know, of course, I'm signed with an agency already. But I also take pride in my work. Mm. And... Um, yeah, I, that's just sucking at something that doesn't work. I mean, it, it, I, I, the feeling I get when I bomb, I enjoy because I'm some gross and it makes me feel something. I don't, I'm very void of emotion. Very, very void of emotion. Mm. Like I should be in the, I should have been in the shower crying today. And I went upstairs and just was in the shower singing, <laughs> singing Tyler Childers, just singing in my shower and my chick walks in. I think she was expecting me to like be sad. Sad. And, 
I just, I don't do it. She thinks I'm kind of a sociopath. Um, I think you just like learn to befriend that, that dark side or like the, the quote unquote, like negative things that we learn to demonize, yeah. right? Especially through everything you've been through and, and even, you know, being a, uh, the professional fighting as well. Yeah. I mean, that I'm not, I don't, I don't fight, but I imagine that you have to love if you've, if you, a fighter can't avoid all the things an average human would avoid. Like they just want pleasure. They don't want pain, but you have to yeah. kind of, you have to seek pain, right? Mm-hmm. To grow like actual yeah. physical and mental pain. Like, yeah. You know? Yeah. Iron sharpens iron. And, um, you know, if you can go through this stuff with the right resolve and tools, you're going to be fine. You know, I see emotions come at me. Okay. I look at it. These situational things. And I go, all right, like what, what how am I going to make this? Am I, how am I going to deal with this? How am I going to put it in a box and put it behind me? And sure, I can turn around and grab that box at any time and be able to show people, look, this is what happened. And this is how I dealt with it. It's it's a very helpful tool, not just for myself, but for other people. Because I can go back and just go, oh, you went through that too. Okay. You know, then that gives people um, the confidence in turning to you about things. Because it feels good to help people. I've been through a lot of shit. And if I can be a um, uh, an example for people, you know, these young athletes, and just people in general, but but the athletes is a big draw because I made so many mistakes. I had, uh, they wanted me to be the first Conor McGregor before Conor was even around because they know I'm a great businessman, they know I'm marketable, and I have a lot of connections, a lot of friends. So there was a lot of star potential there and I squandered it. You know, I squat, I got screwed in this biggest fight of my life. Um, and whatever I did, but it's, you know, it happened a long time ago. Um, you could, you could over things. I used that moment as a time to start using again because my wife was, was using, um, the guy that I fought, Demetrius Johnson, he used that as, as the precipice or the, the drive to become the best, fighter of all time or one of them and you know so i just go look i could have had all that you know i could i could have okay yeah i could have i could be a huge star and you know i i again i don't like fame i don't want it i i'm I'm, that's a weird thing to say because i'm trying to be a stand-up comedian but i like i like telling stories you know i want to affect people in a positive way so yeah, if that comes with some sort of fame, but I'm never going to be, you know, I'll be like a Joe Rogan. Same shit. Go hunting like I already do. Go hang out with my friends. Go, I, I'm, you know, I, I was up in the ghetto this weekend, you know, hanging out with my friends who were poor at their sh- just shitty house. <laughs> like, you know, just, 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 just not, you know, barely getting by, you know? And obviously if I can help my friends, be even better. I can have all my boys work for me who are, you know, the ones that, not all of them are rich. Some of them broke. Um, give those, those people opportunity, you know, and change up their lives and inevitably change up their families and you know, all that sort of stuff. Then that, that's my, my initial bubble of people mm. that just makes everything better, you know, cause money doesn't buy happiness, but it gives you options. You can, you can provide better education for yourself and your family. You can provide better food and better everything, you know, and just to be able to help as many people with that as possible is great. No, and and that can lead to uh, that can lead to the happiness, right? Because it's like people always talk about they make memes or whatever. It's always yeah. money doesn't doesn't buy happiness or doesn't bring happiness. But nobody talks deeper than that. Yeah. not that much deeper. It's, so it's so surface. Yeah, 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 yeah. But can you talk a little bit more about that? So like, uh, yeah, I can't buy happiness. Uh, from your own experience, like it couldn't buy happiness, but it could in this way, like, you know, if you want to delve a little deeper, so people uh, understand a bit For more. me, you know, being able to travel, hmm. being able to travel and sit with other cultures, look how much trouble we're in. Cause everyone, you know, from a few pre- pre- previous generations just hated each other. It was, it was us versus them, black versus white, brown versus them, just back and forth. Everybody, you know, Pakistani, Pakistan, Pakistan, Pakistan versus India. You know, well, uh, uh, there's so many examples where we're all the same. No one is inferior. You know what I mean? We're all, we're all, we're all, 
you know, a really cool, um, you know, creature. So yeah, we're all, we're all the same. We all have the human condition. That's, that's the main issue. Uh, the human path is filled with trauma and again, doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, trauma affects us all the same. I mean, my mommy leaving me at 12 really fucked me up, you know, and sure no one ever molested me or anything. Um, but it's crazy. And we also carry generational trauma, collective trauma. Look at all the Jews, very traumatized people, you know, for what they went through. So it's, that's all of us. You know, I, I think of like, why have I been such a monster at times in my life? What am I getting out? And I feel like it's trauma that's been bestowed on me from, you know, my grandfather or, or what have you, um, people before that even, you know, what did my piece of shit grandfather go through? You know, like I, I, who, who, you know, who knows? I do know uh, you, you, gnarly stuff. Um, and it's like, we just, we have to start looking at things differently. Life in general, uh, each other, because, um, this whole crazy thing that's happening in the world all over the place. America is so fucked up right now. Every single day, new shit happens. The government's trying to, you know, do all this, impose all these things on us. And you're like, what? We thought this was the hope. We thought this guy was the better version, like the new, and somehow it's, I don't know if he is. Donald Trump's a piece of shit. I, I can't vote. I, I, I don't do politics, but I read people. And that pear-shaped fucking douchebag, I mean, he's not a good person. And like, I, 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 a person like that I would see in, in school or out in public, I'll slap you in the mouth if I see you talk to people that way. Mm. You, you, you are a fucking asshole. You're supposed to be like this. You act like a man. You're, you're, you, you could waddle around. You eat all this shit. You treat people horrible. You look like shit. You are just, you can barely, like, you can't, you're just mean. You're mean to people. You know, and it's like, I don't like that. I don't, that's not my thing. And I, for me, it was like, oh, Joe Biden was this upstanding politician. Sure, he's a politician, so he's gross. You know, he's shady. Um, and then you start to see all the weirdness, the kid sniffing. And even that, I was kind of like, nah, he's that age. He's just a creepy old dude that, you know, he's just weird. He thinks it's okay to kiss a little kid. He just, I was trying to, trying to give him a pass. Yeah. I was trying. <laughs> and, you know, I, like I make the joke, I'd rather have my daughter sniff than grab by the pussy. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and everyone goes like I see people like what and I'm like I'd rather have 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 Joe Biden sniff my daughter than Donald Trump grab her by the pussy yeah. and it's a lesser of two evils <laughs> yeah right <laughs> but you know maybe they made the wrong choice because you have him and Kamala Harris who she's a, another person who is gross with all the things she's done really gnarly um and I just, I, you like, you're, we, we have a man up there that's not even coherent, you know, and he's pushing these things on us that are so wrong, so wrong. And as a whole, the government is just, I don't even know why we listen to these people. They're all idiots. Like they, they're so manipulative and they're so just, they're, they're, they're doing the worst things possible. This is turning into a, you know, like a communist country. It's, it's straight up. It's, and it's really gnarly and it's scary you know sure if shit really goes down i'm out of here i'm i'll be fine <laughs> we'll go to another country and you know how cheap stuff in houses in mexico i can buy a palace in mexico you know my family we've, we've talked about it let's move somewhere let's go buy a compound i'll live on the same spot and i'm cool with that but now i mean i guess we could still i could work remotely which would be um, we're thinking about my daughter's already homeschooled you know so it's like it shouldn't be that hard i just have to talk her mom into letting uh you know, let's do it. I was, I was thinking Mexico, Tulum, maybe, but Tulum's a shit show. I don't you want. go back to Mexico. I mean, you're you're gonna just unle unlock more of the, the yeah. Mexican DNA within you, right? Yeah, I'm I'm trying to invest in a retreat center down there called uh, Punta Mita, or no, Punta Mita is a place. They're in Punta Mita. It's um, Buena Vida, and they are at least just talk, thinking about it, talking to these people about it. So yeah, I mean, we could go down there and also looking into investing in property in Tulum, um, but that's more for rental property. Mm. But you can get they can get like a mansion for seven hundred and fifty grand, like so, a badass mansion. Oh, my my friend just bought a couple of them, and he's building more. These places are just so nice, dude. It's really cool, and I I mean I loved life down there. Do I want to raise kids down there? I don't know. Because it's it is like I said it's a shit show, 
but I'm I'm I got I would have to go look at houses and stuff. But you know, somewhere in Mexico, maybe Mexico City. I don't know. Uh, my my girlfriend's a Mexican citizen, so or uh, she has a Mexican citizenship. Her mom's from Mexico, so you know, it's just options. Like that's I'm, I'm lucky I can create the options for myself. That's all it is. You know, it's just it's I'm very 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 grateful for that that option to have. Um, but and plus, it's close enough. It's Mexico. We're on the same continent. If I go to somewhere like Bali, which is another place I have options to move, um, it's too far. You know, way too far. Mm. It takes so long to get there. And and um, yeah, I don't know. I love Bali. I'll go. I mean, I want to go back, but I, don't, I want to. I don't think I'd rather live in Mexico. It seems to be like that. If if something does happen in this country, that's where I'm going. See, when I hear things like that. That is, I used to demonize the fuck out of money because my dad, uh, yeah. he, he was never go to, he would never go to any holidays. He, he probably, he was a workaholic, prioritized making money above, above everything, the family, all yeah. that stuff. So, and, and, uh, I would always say the whole thing like, well, money doesn't bring happiness. You know, the thing we talked about earlier, yeah, but, but now, uh, where I'm at, cause I'm pursuing things I want to pursue and, and I'm, I'm working on that. And it's been, it'll be three years in October that I've been pursuing my dreams and, you know, suffering on my own accord. Yeah. Suffering for what I want, which is yeah. great, right? Now, my brain barely at 32 is really just like, yo, no, I want money, dude. Yeah. So I can do things I want to fucking do. Yeah. You know, it's not going to it's not going to ruin me. It's just going to enhance whatever my life already is like cuz my life is good except the fact that I'm not as like fully independent or, or, or have the complete freedom that I would like which money can bring. Yeah. You exactly. know. Yeah, it's it's about uh that freedom to do those things you want to do. Sure, maybe buy a car, buy a fancy car, great. You know, they make you feel comfortable, keep you safe. You know, it doesn't, it's, it's, and if you can afford a nice one, get a nice one. Yeah. You know, why not? Um, but I don't think how much, also how much time you spend in your car. <laughs> At least me, you know, I just, I just, yeah, just show back from Central California. Um, but I, either way, I'm always in the car. That's just what I do. It's, I'm always talking, but, but you know, other options like the food and the diets or the, the workout stuff, you know, just the self care, you know, whether that's like, uh, massages or having a therapist or whatever, fucking sex toy, you know how expensive sex toys are? Dude, a flashlight dog, a regular flashlight. That's just like, I think like 90 bucks or 80 bucks. So when I got a flashlight, I got the 50% off version, which is half the size and it's open-ended because... Cause yeah, I was like, you know what? Let me do. It was like yeah. thirty five bucks, dude. Women's toys are so expensive. I never, it's, I it's never really fucking how much are they? crazy. Are they like hundreds, yeah, hundreds, hundreds. Oh, fuck, you know, and like they got special. You know, it's, it's a puzzle down there sometimes. Yeah, well, because we're so inept at this whole thing. <laughs> uh, there has to be fucking drills. And the everything's drills. vibrating and fucking. You gotta, you know, you're just like, okay, wait, what? Is this way? Like, just like, what? Okay, hold on, let me pull this chain. We need um, six arms and four tongues. That's what we need. We need more, more than one dick. We need three dicks, two, yeah. so we could double penetrate at the same time, and then a, the third one just to so just, a, just for power. A dick, a dick like <laughs> on your wrist that you could, or like your fingers are dicks, and you can just slap or choke and like you know, because. Yeah. Then you yeah. can shoot more <laughs> at the same time. Like, pew, pew, uh, <laughs> uh. <laughs> you know, <thumb> fingers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's so you know each finger will be different because she might, she'll get tired of the index. So you know, index could be Monday, Tuesday could be in the middle. Yeah. And then the ring finger could be on on Sundays. Yeah, well, if because you she wants to get like married, but we're not gonna get married. One big Sorry. black dick in the middle. Oh yeah, just know? the black one. And just like no. little. You can oh, that's it. the frostbite one. <laughs> That's the one you went skiing with. You should have. We should have wore gloves. <laughs> this is gonna make a great joke. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's. It, <laughs> oh man. Yeah. It's. It's. People are crazy, and you know, we're learning so much about each other and our bodies, and you know how like fucking things feel great in everyone's butts, or people like to get dressed. <laughs> people like to get dressed up, or like whatever it is. You know, like it's just we're so much freer now. To express ourselves, which is beautiful because whether that's just your normal, you know, boy, girl sex or the getting into what BDSM that, you know, that sort of thing or whatever you want group sex, you want polyamory. I mean, polyamory is, I don't want to say it's stupid, but I personally feel like you should just be loving one person. What? You can, because it's so hard to love more than one person. I've tried it. <laughs> 
<laughs> doesn't work. Uh, you, no one gets, no one gets a fair shake. You know, especially if you're gonna like dive into life with this person, you should have just one. Um, it just seems it gets rocky after that. Now, if you want to have toys, if you want to be like, oh, that guy or girl looks like fun, you you want to, uh, you know, take him home with us, then yeah, treat him like a toy, respect him, have fun with him, and then thank him for their service and send him on their way. You know, like that. That's that was always has has. That's my approach. You know, my girlfriend's like. Never. I'm like, okay, fine. We're good. No, I don't have to. Uh, you know, <laughs> but if you want to, yeah, if you want to, later down the line, like, I don't care. Like, we can bring a guy in, you know, whatever. Um, you know, I would just definitely have my friends do it. Like, I'm not into like some random dude. Like, no, no, my friends will put work in. So, uh, you know, don't worry, sweetheart. I got you. But yeah, no, my my girlfriend isn't into it. Um, which again, I I she makes the rules. I, I, if you leave me to my own devices, shit gets out of hand very fast, you know? And it's like, you know, again, back to that energetic output, where's it going? Like, if I have five girls, I remember, like, not that long ago, you know, you have, I have, like, five women on my phone that I'm texting all at once. And I'm just like, oh, like, this is... Like I'm walking into my house to see my kid and my family and I'm just taking up so much time with this. And I'm like, I, I, can't, I, I can't, I should not be doing this, you know? So this is often personal experience, you know, cause I've, I mean, I guess I've kind of had not, not poly relationships, but I've, I've had, you know, multiple partners or whatever. And they, they know people. Simultaneously. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Where people don't, some people don't care. Um, but it's just not for me. You know, I, 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 I love being in love. I'm obsessed with my girlfriend and I just love loving the fuck out of her because it's makes me, makes us both feel good. You know, sure. There's some attachment issues there. There's some, uh, you know, that sort of stuff, but whatever, you know, it's, it is what it is. I just see that, that right there, man. That's the, that's the fucking thing that I got issues, dude. I got massive abandonment issues, like big time. I mean, me too. Like, like it's fucked yeah. up and it sucks, dude. It fucking sucks <laughs> ass. Right. But then, I've been avoiding that. I want love too, dog. Yeah. But I've been avoiding it so much because I'm like, I don't know. This person's not. This person got some issues. Like they got this and that. And I remember one of my friends was like, uh, I'm like, they got red flags. And my friend was like, You ever think about the fact that you got red flags? <laughs> and it, it, was it you that said that? Who said that? Somebody, no, 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 it, it, was no. like, it was another dude. I forgot who. I don't That's know who so it was. Funny. And it like blew my mind. I was like, It wasn't even that long ago. It was like yeah. a few months ago, maybe three months ago, two months ago. And I was like, Fuck. Yeah. I don't even know. A hun- I, I mean, I'm aware of, that I got issues. I'm aware of certain things, but I don't even fully understand because I'm I'm in this thing. I'm just with this. I've yeah. been looking at myself, you know, like looking in the mirror every day, sl- a, a frog boiling in water. I don't even know I'm boiling, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Th- there's a song called uh, from Joyner, Joyner Lucas that is it's called The Problem. Problem. And it's just him talking about it's he's the problem in all the different ways just like and it's it's true my whole life that that was it you know i've i've dated some great people you know or had some great relationships or opportunities in my life and i always got my own way you know i i've come from great circumstance great parents where they just saw me obsessed with a sport and like he's crazy as fuck we need to you know give him coaches and this and that and the other thing you know and um good schooling you know i just i didn't i didn't follow the family path will say uh i didn't didn't go to, i went to college but dropped out um didn't you know go into business I, ch- I chose to do what i did for a living and um even with the addiction you know like just the partying or the women or whatever i i, I chose to date some crazy people as well some of them maybe i don't want to say they're bad people because some of them are just fucked up you know just still addicted or still like one woman ripped very badly like hasn't talked to her son in years or not, yeah, I guess probably a couple of years now, yeah. you know, and it just, it's drugs, it's drugs and brain damage, you know, from other from sports she was doing. So it's like, it sucks, man. It's really heavy because you just end up feeling bad. I even felt bad for my grandpa who at one point I wanted to go murder. Like I was going to go kill him. Like, you know, it wouldn't have bothered me. I, I say that to myself at the time I could have done it. He lived in the desert. I could go kill him, you know? And then, yeah, I remember my cousin called and was like, "Hey, don't do it." My brother and I were like, like what?" <laughs> yeah, what? he said, "What do you mean?" He's like, "Yeah, you know, no, no, not happening." And of course, we didn't, and I'm much better for it, you know, because that would have been 
that would have been gnarly. That would have stuck with you for the rest of your life. Oh yeah, yeah. And I, 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 I actually felt bad for my grandpa at one point. Um, I like was sitting there and I remember vividly talking about it, going over everything, you know, and all of a sudden I just saw him as a broken child. And I remembered what I knew about in his past. And I was like, Oh wow. I felt bad for him. I felt the genuine. I just started bawling. I was just like, like that was, it was very cathartic. Um, but it needed to happen, you know, like you can't, we can't, you know, perpetuate drama and, and, and uh, trauma and, and, you know, that sort of stuff on each other. Yeah. Cause that blame doesn't really lead. Cause like, I mean, I, my, my plan when I, my, because my, my dad was very abusive to us and my mom, you know, like, uh, not, not sexually abusive, but, you know, like physically mm -hmm. bullying, uh, mentally, all that shit, emotionally, all that stuff. And I told myself that once I got big enough, uh, I would kill him. I would murder him. Yeah. And then I'm glad I didn't because, well, he, he died in a car accident, so the car did it for me. But uh, <laughs> bad joke. <laughs> it's been 11 years. But, uh, no, no, but, but like I, 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 I used to think, what if I just at least just punched him in the face like yeah. just once and I, yeah. and I thought about it recently and I don't regret it because because I didn't it allowed, allowed time over that that past decade for me to you know just be left with all this shit and I had no choice but to figure it out and then eventually led me to forgiving him at his grave not that long ago like less than a year ago but oh, it took yeah. a decade yeah. yeah good for you man a so, decade you know where did he grow up I grew up in no, where, where, where did your dad grow up he grew up in Korea and then yeah. came to America, I think, but when I mean, he was in high school. Life in Korea. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Especially like with his parents. Like and then the war and then I the way how hardcore he was to us. Yeah. I can only imagine how my grandpa was to because yeah. you know, it was it was my and he was the eldest son. So the eldest son of a Korean family yeah. has all the pressure on them. Yes. And is is the one that's like they get the shit kicked out of them the yeah. most. Yeah. 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 So that's I mean yeah, he just oh man. Did you did you listen to um, Park? That woman that was on. Um, you, I, don't, I can't think of how you say her first name. Yaomi. Or, oh, I listened to the whole podcast on Joe Rogan, the North Korea. That thing, fucking, that really changed my perspective on life too. Pe truly, truly oppressed people don't know they're oppressed, and then that that was like, dog. They don't even know that they're in Korea. They, yeah. they don't know anything. They they've never they're they living in the Stone Ages. There is no I in their language. Me. It's just we. That's yeah. how communist. Yeah. It, yeah. It, I mean, lack and, of individualism. And, and that's <clears throat> that's happening. It's just it's so crazy to think it's happening right now. You know, because we have all this stuff, and you know, all this like you know, the, we're so advanced as a, as a, not just America, but you know, the rest of the fucking world. And you have certain pockets that are just that are so bad. Mm -hmm. You know, the China there. You have fucking all over the place. The South, there's places in the South that people, <laughs> people live like they're in the Stone Age still, you know, and it's just, we have to change it. We have to try, but it's, it's just, that's just such a bigger obstacle than what we think. You know what I mean? Like, what do you do with, with, with North Korea? Like realistically, without having China come and try and shit on you, you know, there's nothing like that's, that's, that's something that will start an, a, a crazy war. That'll fucking kill so many people. So it's like, do you let these people suffer? Or do we step in and lose a bunch of lives too? And I think we should. I think that people are ready to do it. Mm. I think that for, for sure people are ready to do it. But it's like, how, how do we control that? Like how, you know, how do we... Oh, it's, it's so nuts. I have a bunch of friends in the Special Forces, or were. You know, the whole uh, Operation Pineapple Express? <clears throat> How they went over and they saved all those people in Afghanistan recently? Oh, after the whole like pulling pulling yes. out of Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. So two friends, and well, more than two, but two that are well known. Um, uh, Tim Kennedy, the fighter, and my other friend Jericho Denman, who I was on HBO with, and he we did a mushroom ceremony. Um, he. Like I, I remember just I, crazy to think these people, these, these, you know, these guys are so connected with all this. They see it coming. And before the public, before the public can um, even think of the idea to go get these people out, my buddies were already doing it. Like they were already there and they already, already accomplished it. 
That's crazy. You know, and just to be able to appreciate what these people go through and what they do, what they put, they put themselves on the line for. Instead of waiting for oh, they everybody all, else. They all, I mean, AJ. AJ. AJ's ready to go back and fuck shit up. You know, and AJ's soft as baby shit. Yeah. You know, like he's not, he's, I mean, he's built like a brick shit house, but he's just, he's not like, a, a, you know, a fighter. I've, I mean, I've, I've taken him to the gym. We've, you know, like seen him hit the bag, hit pads. Mm. And he could, I'm sure he could beat some ass, but he's not like a, a you know, that kind of person. And like we're, we're talking like at the core, like mentally, like. Yeah, a, a fucking killer. Yeah, a killer. But yeah. he wants to go and put his life on the line for, for this country. Yeah. So, um, it, it's way out of my scope of thinking of how to figure that situation out. But hopefully, you know, if we have to get down, we have the right people for it. It's just, where do we want to go to war? That's the thing. Mm -hmm. Do we want to go in Afghanistan? Do we want to go to Korea? Like we're so tied up as a country that it just seems like we can't, you know, we, we would have to go in with, it would have to be like a bunch of countries. You know, Australia, the UK, like a bunch of countries that have to get behind us. You know, so, yeah. Like, or we have to team up with Russia. And they're, I mean, they're teamed up with Russia. We're not. So it's like, how would, you know, it's just, I, I, again, I don't know. It's just wild to think about. It's really, it's, it's, it's really scary. Yeah. You know? There's too many. It's not just like one country and then like levels of the government. It's fucking millions of lives. Yeah. Multiple countries, billions, potential world war, billions. Yeah, that's fucking insane. Yeah, you know, and yeah. then that made me, you know, realizing that, and and you know, because it's e it was easy for really easy for me to complain when I would compare to other people, you know, about you know, I don't make as much money as I'd like, you know, uh, I don't I don't have a certain thing that I want, whatever, blah blah, and then hearing about just not even the knowledge of yeah. knowing that you're oppressed, and then I thought about. That's a privilege in itself. And the fact that I still get to do what the fuck I want to do, like that's so fucking first world, regardless of if you're a minority or a not or, yeah. or not that like I am very fucking lucky. All of us are. We're oh, fucking yeah, lucky. Seriously. It's 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 crazy to think about, you know, and as you can just run over this in circles in your brain to drive yourself crazy. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I, I just I just do what I do and I just work hard. Yeah, it's like, and that's where I'm at too. I just I, I accepted it. I'm like, you know what? I feel lucky as shit. So it makes me have a higher level of gratitude. And I'm like, I don't really have much to complain about. So I'll just keep doing it because I I can't. Yeah. Besides doing what I do, trying to make people laugh, and then you know putting out podcasts where it can help yeah. people maybe change the perspective and help them a bit. Um, you know, I just doing whatever we can in our own. Yeah. In our well, own it's our job to make right? people laugh. In this day and age, this time, people need to laugh, and people yeah. and people also need to hear the truth. And the truth means it's you know it, it might come out in really fucked up ways, gross ways, but that's funny. You know, it it, it it just it's that's that's comedy, and you know we're we're so ready to open up and let people do whatever they want. You know, whether it's you know the whole gay straight trans. Uh, people can, I mean, people are taking things so far, mm -hmm. like taking the political sides and doing this stuff to just this crazy extent, all of it, all of it is so out there now. Um, we're still going to get mad at people for making jokes. Like, no, that's not how this works, you know? So, uh, everyone gets a fair shake and we should be able to say fucked up shit and say people should, people should be able to say, even if they want to spread fucking propaganda and say fucked up shit like they i feel like everyone should be able to say whatever they want we should be able to hear it and go meh that's wrong you're fucked up now if they're taking action and citing violence or something yeah that's different mm -hmm. but why can't we have civil conversation about things and of course a civil conversation with someone spouting off being a nazi is not civil that's gross but we can ignore these people and again we can we can strike them down even if they fucking if they go to hurt people obviously you know i'm not, not for an eye for an eye but if people are trying to go out there to do that to hurt people then yeah we can take them out mm -hmm. you know like but it's just it, there's there's varying degrees of everything obviously you know not everyone needs to die for everything <laughs> you know like it's this no it's just you know there's certain situations where um you know bad men have to die 
And and there, there's people like like those special forces guys out there that can that can make sure those people do. You know, we're 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 not we're not going to change that much. Especially though, you know, people that live like that. You see these, you know, Taliban fighters and stuff. The they don't know any better. They they're so trained and so programmed. Their children are so programmed. They're all so fucking programmed to hate us, mm -hmm. and to have this. They don't. They'll never learn. So it's like, do we have to kill these people in mass? Like, ah, that's heavy, dude. But how else are we, you know, how, how, how else are we going to get around it? So we have to find other ways, you know? So it's like, how, how are we going to figure that one out? You know, and that's just one place. This is, that's just literally one place. Not only hates us, but hates themselves. Mm. The way they treat people, you know, the way that, that these other cultures treat, um, women children animals whatever it is like there's just life is cheap so it's you know and, and they, they don't have, they also don't have anything so it's just a different it's a different thing we'll never understand you know it's 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 a uh, it's hard it's hard to wrap your head around it when when we grow up here yeah <clears throat> there all right so there's a um i'll wrap up with this it's a question i've been thinking about that I know people, um, you're going from retiring yeah. as a professional fighter, which was your whole identity yeah. from that point on to now with, you know, the whole journey of rediscovering your identity. What was that like? And what is it now for you? Oh man. I was numb from 14 to 34. I don't know who that person was. Uh, it wasn't me. You know, I'm a happy, nice person, and I wasn't. You know, it was miserable. Um, so to come out of that and really find who I am, I'm still a kid. I'm stuck there. Uh, and it's nice, but it, it's, and it's, it's a beautiful feeling to feel free of the addiction and all that sort of stuff, the trauma. So it's, it's turned into a really amazing feeling. You know, I had <clears throat> my friend JJ, JJ Thomas. He is a uh, bronze medalist in the Olympics for snowboarding. And I was dating one of his friends. Um, and I, I didn't even know we were this close. We were this like good of friends, you know. And I, when I started to retire, but I, I mean, look back, we, we spent a lot of time together. Um, always partying, but whatever. Um, and you know, he, he pulls me or calls me and goes, Hey man, we need to talk. I was like, what's up? He's like, I hear you're retiring. I was like, yeah, what, you know, what's going on? He goes, we need to talk to you know This isn't going to be easy. This isn't going to be fun. And he broke down like the, the five, six steps or whatever it was that I went through. How, how much, how, how hard it was going to be and how I'm going to come out on the other side, an educator, a coach, and the teacher of, of many things that, I, that I'm, I understand. He's like, I know how good of a guy you are. It's like, you're just tortured. But watch, you know, through the healing, everything you're doing, like, this is going to get easier. And it's all happened. It's all happened. And, like, I mean, I... I've had so many instances like this that things like this have happened that that I, I it blows me away. It really blows me away. So I'm very just appreciative of, of life as a whole. You know, because life is really beautiful. You know, wh whether you're having a bad day or not, <clears throat> you go outside and life doesn't stop being beautiful. It doesn't. You know, like... We we know we need to realize that this space and time we're in now and these these meat suits, um, this is just for the time being. We're gonna get reincarnated as something else later, or well, because or, or even if we don't, we we still are this energy, we're this being, this light being, stardust, that um, is here forever. We don't go away. You know, you transcend to whatever you you have some crazy DMT trip and go to some other dimension. Uh, but that's what what it seems like, you know. You go into some other uh, some other form of existence, and and again, I don't know about the recreation thing or the you know being recycled like that. But you are recycled into something that's in this earth that's positive, 
And um, knowing that is it makes me feel safe, feel really safe, and and no no fear of death. Mm-hmm. Before I didn't didn't fear death because I wanted to die. Now, you know, for to, for some sort of glory or some sort something like that, you know, going out with like a bang. Yeah, going out with a bang like a supernova. But now it's it's. I can't wait to die because I don't want I want to see what's on the other side, like what's happening next. Mm. You know, that's going to be amazing because I'm going to build something in this life that changes culture, that changes the human existence, that changes the people around me, you know, the people that I love. So once I lay that, once I lay all that down and, and I get to pass it on to some, some other people, you know, and someone else takes over. My daughter ends up becoming a philanthropist for me and gives everything away. She asked me recently, she's like, what are you going to do with all this money? Everyone keeps telling you how rich you're going to be and how, you know, we're going to have some big house and all this cars and shit. She didn't say shit. She's nine. Um, <laughs> but she's just like, she's so cool because she'll call me out. And I was like, I don't know. Make you want to give it away? Let's do it. Mm. You know, because there's going to be enough of it where... You know, it's a $960 million market cap. Um, I need to figure out if I call it, call it a market cap. I don't know. Um, that's how much money is going to be in the industry. Then I'm going to have a portion of it, probably a large one. Um, so, yeah, I can, I'll be able to, uh, you know, I'll, I'll take care of a bunch of people. I mean, I found a glitch in the matrix. So the... Internet says I'm worth fifteen point one billion dollars. Wow, really? Yeah, and I'm not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, there's very few people in this world that are that are over worth over ten billion. Like it's like very small. Um, and I see how how much sway and power my friends that have just one two billion dollars. How much they have? It's fucking crazy. And. Sure, they're, some of them are you know a little crazy and they live wild lives, but um, you know just even helping them become better versions of themselves, you know we can impact um, a lot more people. Damn, <laughs> that <Yes>. was deep. <laughs> okay, uh, all right. So, uh, if if you had to leave the audience right now with one one bit of advice or one bit of wisdom for maybe how to live life. It doesn't mean like you have to tell them what to do, but something that, you know, you learn from your, for yourself, just, you know, a little something, whatever it may be, something, it could be something big or small uh, or a lesson you learned. What would that be? The, the words and the energy you're putting out in Serbian, they call it the, uh, the Udik where, that initial thing, everything that comes out of your mouth, every thought you have should be positive because once they go negative, they have a bad vibration in your life and that's a ripple effect. Mm. So everything you can do to be positive, even if you're saying negative stuff in your head, tell yourself, no, talk yourself out of it. You have those, those three voices in your head, you know, and I get in arguments with myself all the time. What is it? The, the, the ego, the id, and the super, super, yeah, super yeah. ego. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, those are just three voices in my head that are talking at all times. They're always arguing about shit. And now they've gotten a lot nicer where they're in this, this thing or when talking about other people, even those words, I just forgive people. I just laugh at them. I'm like, yeah, they're just silly, you know? So really taking that in, into consideration, uh, it's not just what you say when you're around other people. Don't be fake. Be genuine about how you feel um, in a positive way about yourself and others and, and, um, and situations and stuff and art or whatever it is, you, you, life will be much better. So just be transparent, be honest and, and don't self edit yourself so much. Yeah. I mean, we're all, we're always going to be our, our own worst critic, mm. but you know, be also be light on yourself, you know, don't like punish yourself. You know, I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm horrible at that. Uh, but <laughs> I, you know, it's, I, I, I'm, you know, yeah, it's, it's something I'm working on. And you know what? We're all working on that. Yeah. <laughs> that we're all, yeah. okay. All right. You, uh, would you like to plug in your socials and website, whatever you want to? 
Yeah, uh, the McCall Method is my my uh, website where you can get coaching and stuff. I don't really do it much anymore because I'm busy and it's hard to have clients that I'm, I'm an integration coach for. That's just a lot of energy and, and stuff to deal with. Um, my social media is Ian McCall on Instagram or Uncle Creepy on Twitter. Um, Facebook is Ian McCall. And yeah, man, go check out HBO Real Sports. It's my kind of my big thing that happened, you know, a while back. Um, was the, one of the first people eating mushrooms on TV. Um, and yeah, just check it out. There's a lot of crazy stuff happening right now. So just um, be ready because I realize the more conversations I have about psychedelics uh, in the VC world and all the, with my with the partners I have, mm. they have no idea how big this is going to be. So starting in, investing in these companies because they're going to change the world and there's so much money to be made. It's, it's, it's just astonishing, you know, and, and that will inevitably make you happier <laughs> with the options, you know, it will. It, the money will make you happier because it's just going to, you know, it, it just makes you feel more accomplished too. That's for sure. Yeah, especially when eating a fat ass fucking ribeye steak. <laughs> yeah, that's medium yeah. rare. Yeah, and really expensive food is very good. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> which is one of my goals. Yes, for uh, why I want to make the money. Yes. But guys, Skrilla, Skrilla. Guys, this has been another episode of the Separate Podcast. Thank you for listening, and until then, I will see you on the next episode. Thank you very much. Peace.